And well, hello, as I promised, this time around we're gonna have the Chimera tutorials. And I wanna show you, I have the page right here, but not the right one as far as I can see. Uh, here we go, this, this is the one I want us to, to go through, let's see. Yeah, that's that's readable right even if you see me you can see what i'm gonna show you and you can practice what this is gonna be about in fact all of these tutorials are very simple but i think it's sometimes important to have somebody to go uh almost hand in hand with you why chimera is not organized like many other programs that follow this pattern of menus that follow the same organization as word or any other program sometimes they can be very very confusing but once you start mastering them and get a good idea of where things are supposed to be according to its philosophy it becomes far easier so let me see uh, we need or what you need Ha, huh, there we go. Over there is the web page. You yeah, this I should improve my frames. Wonder if that's better. So go to the www.cgl.ucsf.edu chimera and pretty much you can just surf through it. I, I'm gonna go back to the page where I landed. So Chimera on your search uh, engine, whatever it is, Doc, 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 Go or anything, like doesn't matter, you should be able to find it. And if you click on the main one, oh, go straight to the tutorials or the user guide. And there you can find the tutorials. And these are the most basic, but probably the most important ones because these actually tells you how to do everything, every single thing you could want to do with Chimera. So let's begin. Getting started. Now, this is one of the reasons uh, I also want to go through this with you, and it's that it's mostly text. So for the first time that you are trying to practice things, it's not as obvious where the menus, where the actions are. So in order to make this uh, applied, what I'm gonna do is also open Chimera already and have it here in the background. As I mentioned before, I like a certain layout. So every single time I open Chimera, I also want the model panel around as well as the side view. Not always, well, this this I wanna have always, and let me hide this. Always, model panel, side viewing. Sometimes I also like to have the reply log, though it's not, not indispensable. It's something you can or not have. or and the command line. And it's kind of subtle, the command line is down here. I'm gonna keep it here. Maybe we'll use it, maybe we won't, but I'm gonna have it there. Those are the things I want in general on Chimera. The main window, the model panel, the side viewing, mm, the command line for sure, and sometimes the reply log. I'm gonna keep this like that. If you can reproduce this, or if you want to reproduce this, all you need to do is go here, open the model panel, the side view, the command line, and the reply log, and arrange them any way you want. I, I have this particular arrangement just because it's the one I like. Okay, that being said, let's go into the tutorial. So the tutorial starts with something that's very top for Chimera. Many things in Chimera, pretty much everything can be accomplished 
in different manners. Sometimes you can go to the menus or you can go to the command line and the menus can be on the model window or they can be on the side window. Color styles, everything can be changed in different manners. So in this tutorial, what we're going to do is just basic things. What does it mean basic? Manipulation, that is movement or even modification, selection and change. Change because, well, if you don't know, but proteins in PDBs are usually uh, named, labeled with letters from A to C and sometimes even with numbers so people can identify different parts of the protein. So we already have camera open and we have the graphic window. The graphic window is this one in blue. It's also called rapid access interface and it's called that because here we have a couple of buttons that you can pretty much use quickly to access things. For example, here is a list of the things that are active, uh, other uh, options to open or browse files. It's a quick access window. Now here it's indicating us to use that quick, well, actually not, the menus, choose file fetch from ID and get one seek from the protein data bank. Now Chimera being part of your interface allows you to select text from anywhere in your computer and paste it. So let's take this slowly. First, number one way, oh, the first way I'm gonna mention to open a structure file as the tutorial is asking us. Right here in the corner of this main window, there's this button called fetched. You can click on that one and while selecting PDB, because we're looking for a PDB, and that is probably clear, yeah, a PDB from the Protein Data Bank, here we can just paste the code. And if I click, click on that button down here that says fetched, the, if, if you are connected to the internet, Chimera will download it and display it. So first way to do this. I'm gonna close it, I'm not gonna carry it through. Also in file, fetch by ID, you access exactly the same menu. And since I already pasted that code in there, it's ready for me to click fetched. You could do it in the command land line, but I pretty much did not ignore the command that you will need to use. So let's just go with this. Now Chimera also has this interesting feature that could be useful. I don't know, maybe, maybe May, it may be not to your liking that this file has been downloaded here to my computer. It's somewhere, probably in downloads, Chimera, PDB, some such thing. In fact, we should probably look for it. Hmm. Okay, so in downloads, there's already a Chimera folder and there's a PDB file. And this one has just been downloaded. This you can change if you don't want to. Well, of course you need to be connected to the internet to download files, uh, but you can not save them here or erase them afterwards. But if you do later, you can just access them exactly through the very same menu. Here, what I'm gonna do is click on this lightning bolt in, lightning bolt in the lower right corner, and I return to the rapid access. And here in my list, there's a list with PDVs that I have open, and one of them is sick, and it has these square brackets. It says PDV because it's been downloaded from the PDB. If I click on that and there was nothing loaded, I would be opening it again. Uh, um, mm. Okay, so we have this. What does the tutorial wants us to do now? Oh yeah, so I, I forget to mention, I forgot to mention that it's up to you, but um, I recommend that at least for manipulation of structures, you have handy a mouse. I'm, I'm not really using this one, but if you have a mouse, it's probably better than a trackpad. I'm on a laptop and in general in Mac computers, but I think a 3D button mouse will be ideal. I have other tools, I can show them to you later, but they are probably not as accessible, in price at least to to just a mouse so you need a mouse that, that's all i can say be be sure you get one and that you like it and you can use it properly hey sorry i'm adjusting the camera there we go 
What does our tutorial says? Okay, so uh, yeah, we download it from the internet. If we already had it, we could open it not from the fetch, but from the, as I shown you, from the rapid access menu or file open. The open uh, version of file open is gonna browse your computer. That, that's pretty normal. I don't think I need to explain it. Then uh, we have this, exactly this representation. By default, the initial display is ribbons and these ribbons are shown right here. We can change it in, as already Chimera told us, in many, 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 many ways. That is not only how are we represented the protein, but how does it look and how do we do it? So let's start with what they say. We can display atoms here in the ribbon representation. There's no atoms, just an interpolation of where the ribbon goes through. So let's do exactly what they ask us. Actions, oops, sorry. Actions, atoms, bonds, show. So here, this is the menu structure, the main menu, then a lower menu and yet a lower menu. So actions, the main menu, uh, what was the next? Atoms and bonds, okay. Actions, atoms and bonds and show. Okay, because the default selection is everything in the PDB file, well, or rather everything that you, oh, look at that. This is the reason why I like to have the model panel. Even though nothing happened when I click this SIG file on the quick access, actually something happened. And I'm gonna do it again so you can see. Keep your, keep your eyes on the model panel. So now I have three copies of the same model here, but because they're exactly the same, unless you look at the model panel, you don't know. So what I'm gonna do is go, what I'm gonna do is the easiest way to restore your window to the initial settings. And it's going to file, close session. Now I have nothing on my screen. I'm back to the quick access, main, uh, the quick access window. I'm gonna click on seek and I have just one model gonna go back again to actions, atoms one, but before clicking and going back to the previous state, look at the actions menu. This action menu is interesting in, in that it separates the object that the actions are gonna be carried upon. What do I mean by that? That the actions for atoms and bonds are independent from the actions for ribbons and they are independent from the actions for surface and they are independent from the actions from color, label, and so on. They are um, tied to the selection. If I, as I, as I just did, go actions, atoms, bonds, and show, it's gonna show all of the atoms. It's gonna show all of the atoms for everything that is on my model panel. Best starting camera for reals. Yeah, exactly. And what's even more important- Sorry about that. If I go to the ribbons menu, it's gonna affect all of the ribbons present in my window. However, if I select a section, a specific section of the structure, uh, what I'm gonna see, what it's gonna be affected, what it's gonna be affected by the actions is only gonna be that selection, okay? That is not so different from where you select text in Word and just make it uh, script or bold or whatever, except in the fact that Word doesn't have secondary structures or, or surfaces or whatnot. So that's something to continue to consider before going to the actions. So I'm gonna go to the action. I everything is gonna be affected. So what we should see on the screen is, and I'm gonna move the structure around, not only the side chains, or actually only the side chains, water molecules, and if there were any ions here, those should also be visible. I don't see ions, there's no protons because this is probably a crystallographic structure. Uh, but we don't see the backbone either. And the reason for that is that uh, while the ribbons are selected, the back, while the ribbons are shown, not selected, are shown, the backbone is gonna be hidden. The backbone as atoms is gonna be hidden, okay? So that, that's something to be careful about because um, it's 
some residues are gonna look weird in the in the in this window if you don't if you don't notice what do I mean let's see if we can find an example well uh, yeah you know what I'm gonna do is do exactly the opposite I'm gonna go to the actions uh, perform an action over the ribbons Sorry, I need to update the the description of this video. I'm gonna go to the actions ribbons and I'm gonna hide them. So what do you think it's gonna happen? Well, what is gonna happen is that they're gonna disappear, but because I have already highlighted uh, or actually shown all of the atoms, now we can see the the backbone represents represented as bonds as bonds and atoms. If I go for ribbons and show, there they are. Now they are hidden. That can can get tricky sometimes. Uh, sometimes representations can be weird. Let's see. Uh, maybe this is a good one. This is an alanine. I'm gonna focus on that and hide the ribbons. Yeah, you saw that. It, it slightly change its position or the position be or the bonds between the atoms. I'm going to go to show. You see, it kind of shifts. So what Chimera is trying to do is interpolate the positions of the backbones for the ribbons, but because of that interpolation, also the position of the bond changes a little. So what the takeaway from this is just don't trust exactly what you see because they are representations. And if you need to make measurements it's likely that you are going to have to use atoms no never use the ribbons maybe there's some distortions and you should be careful with that of course so here we are what does the tutorial say now uh, oh yes the colors the initially the colors are heteroatom colors that is oxygens are red yeah, the waters and the hydroxides of this tyrosine. We already can see some yellow, so sulfurs in methionines. Mm, nitrogens are blue. Carbons here are teal, as the same as the structure of the protein. And we can move the structure with the mouse. And I, I, well, I could probably show you that. Let me see if I can activate my mouse. Mm -hmm. There's the mouse. So yeah, I don't, I don't use the mouse. Left mouse button, rotation, middle translation, and right zooming. So left rotation, middle, middle, oh, yeah, no, I'm not pressing it, I'm just scrolling, that's why it's controlling the zoom, but if I click, it translation, and the right is the zoom, and you can see something that I really like, the icon, a circle for rotation, a cross for translation, and an increase size arrow for zoom in or zoom out. So that's why I mentioned that having this are having a mouse is pretty useful. And there's combinations with the keyboard that I'm not going to show. And I have another tool that I like a little bit better for manipulating the structures or moving the structures about. Yeah, well, there's options for using the, the touchpad, but I recommend you get a mouse, really. It's totally worthwhile. And sometimes, depending on the type of trackpad, particularly in Macs, it can get really crazy and not easy to see. Oh, I already did this. Hide the ribbons to reveal the backbone. Okay, let's do it again, just because. Actions, ribbons, hide them. Bye-bye, ribbons. Actions, ribbons, show them. Here we go again. So uh, yeah, here we go. In this tutorial, they recommend for us to 
go to the favorites menu and open the side view as I did before. And you can see the, uh, this interactive scaling and clipping version. It shows uh, the tiny version of the structure, as you can see here, but we are looking as the name implies from the side. So you can not only manipulate it on the make window, but see what's going on. So I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so that you can see what's going on. There. Depending on the zoom and the position, you can see that these lines, the yellow ones, change relative to this yellow square. That yellow square represents your eyes. So if the yellow square goes into the structure, you are going to be seeing things from within the structure. And everything that is outside the cone of the red light, the red lines, it's outside of your view. Here we pretty much are only manipulating the the yellow line closer to the representation of the eye, but the one in the back can also be changed position by dragging it. So that will be, I think, my left uh, mouse button and just hide sections of the protein and or focus on different sections of the protein. And that can be used to great advantage when you want to display very specific things in your protein structure. Sometimes it's very easy to make a mistake and your protein disappears and not always you will have to close the, the program and open it again. Here, the action of focus comes very handy because if you click on that, what, what's going to happen is whatever is selected, in this instance everything, it's going to be affected by the focus and the focus action is going to bring everything that is in the program which could be several structures, not just one, back into the region covered by these red lines. So watch. You see? Everything, if I've had plenty of structures, if, if there were many, if these were many structures all over the way, the all over the screen, even if this is tiny, I will the program will try to get all of them back into the view. So extremely useful. Oh yeah, don't forget to click on the window you want to interact with. If you don't click, sometimes the behavior is odd. Like you can, yeah, okay, this one is okay. L I'm not going to click on the window where the structure is, and, but I'm going to try to move it with my mouse. Well, with my 3D mouse and it responds, but if I put the mouse without clicking over an atom, nothing happens. Whereas if I click on the window and put my mouse over an atom, I get information about that atom. So don't forget that. It's sometimes really useful just to hover with the mouse and get information. But that doesn't happen if you haven't selected the window. What else we have? Ah, yes, this is exactly the information that is giving us here. The balloon, if you put your mouse or hover your mouse over anything, you're going to get information in this in this format rest name rest num chain atom name let's check it out so this is dress name hoh number 50 dot b so the water number 53 from chain b and the atom is specifically an oxygen let's go for this lysine over here lysine 15 b and it's a nitrogen zeta so cool Oh, wait, wh you could ask me why is that useful? Well, you can use the information in the command line to select it and perform some op some operation on that one. E yeah. <laughs> now comes the Chimera selection. This selection works, well, let, let's read what it says. You can select atom bonds, residues, many, many, many different things and you can use the actions menu. Uh, different ways, a different way to make the selections is by picking on the screen. What this picking means, I'm going to click on the link. You need to press the control button to pick. So let me show you. Here's my mouse. If I just click without any selection, without any modifier, nothing happens. I get the rotation icon. But if I press the control button and click, 
on the atom what I did was just select one tiny atom you see the atom highlighted in green and the residue it belongs to highlight but doesn't mean there's a selection just that they belong together and down here in this corner you can read that the selection encompasses only one atom so here they are going to guide us to another example that is not picking it's using the menu so i'm going to clear my selection and you can do that on select clear selection and i'm going to follow the instruction so select residue select it's a menu a sub menu is residue and that sub menu is slicing so select residue slicing <laughs> and now you can see the highlight covers the whole side chain and probably the backbone too even though we cannot see it and let's color it hot pink actions color hot pink so actions color hot pink remember what i told you before which since we have selected a subsection of the protein just lysine residues this action is only going to affect those residues contained in the selection we can see on the main window that yeah lysines have become not only selected but hot pink and in the side view we can see that too what's next here they describe the selection that it's highlighted in green and now we can do the opposite go to select clear selection select clear selection and if we go to actions color hot pink what's gonna happen is now everything is gonna become hot pink mm -hmm. everything why because nothing is selected everything is affected you already seen that the select menu has other options you can select chain B oh well just let's follow this uh, list we are gonna select chain B and then color it cyan how will we do that well select chain letter B and now the action color cyan now notice that the protein as well as water molecules because they are labeled as chain B they have been selected and the action affected all of them actions ribbon height okay notice that the selection remains so what we are only gonna hide are the ribbons for chain B mm -hmm. sorry uh, I'm getting thirsty because this chain was the only selected this only affected that chain select structure solvent this is going to select all of the water molecules doesn't matter if they are chain uh, sorry see if they are if they are chain a or B and the action of hiding it's gonna only hide sorry the action atoms bond hide it's only gonna hide the water molecules so pretty neat right oh I did it again sorry for I'm trying to close something on my Twitter feed now select chemistry element nitrogen we are from a point we're on a point where water was selected and notice down here this magnifying glass says that the water is still selected even if we cannot see it it's still there but now we're going to select chemistry element was that let me go check yeah chemistry element nitrogen so select chemistry element nitrogen and all of the nitrogens where whether hidden by the ribbon or in the side chains are selected and we are gonna perform the action of 
turn them into spheres so actions atoms bonds sphere actions atoms bonds spheres whoa and now we made those nitrogen atoms into spheres that should have an atomic radius corresponding to the mass of the atom so that will be a more realistic representation of the atom itself now we clear the selection and per we'll perform the action atoms bond sticks so clear the selection and atoms bond sticks uh, this should return most of the uh, all of the atoms into the regular into a regular representation where the sticks are the size sorry the sticks represents the bonds and the atoms are tiny spheres so as you can see in general the menus can allow you to do pretty much any selection scheme you want they are flexible all you have to know about your structure is what atom, what residue, what chemistry, like details about the selection that you want to do so that it works. But that's about it. There's other ways to select residues or ranges of residues, and that will be using the sequence tool. This, uh, sorry, the sequence tool and window. When the, sequ the sequence window has mouse focus, the there it's going to give you information I, i'm just going to show you so favorite sequence i'm going to display both uh, i'm going to make this window smaller Here you can see two sequence windows, one for chain A and another for chain B. These are probably identical because it's a coil coil and these are usually homodimers. Now what the tutorial says is that you have this selected and you put your mouse on hovering on the residues, you will get the sequence. But not only that, let's say I'm interested in this histidine while they said the window is up, selected, and I can click and drag my mouse over the histidine what well, that's going to happen the, here on the main window is that the whole residue is selected and any operation I perform through actions it's going to affect that residue only so let's uh, let's use it action atom bonds hide so that is going to hide I'm going to first focus so everything is Oh, of course, focus acted only on, on what it's selected. I'm going to clear my selection and focus. Here we go. And as the tutorial says, atom, atoms and bonds hide. OK, so we only have ribbons. Uh, and display all atoms. Wait, what did I do? Oh, yeah, so this wanted us only to do by selecting. I'm gonna what I'm gonna do return to the original oh well not the original this version and I'm gonna do the same thing I did select it select only a sequence a region of the sequence and hide atoms and bonds now that is not gonna work because we don't have atoms and bonds but if I do it with ribbon there we go no ribbon but well it's still there but I just hit it and there it goes back now select structure protein so that means i'm probably i'm probably supposed to hide this select all hide ribbon there we go select structure protein actions atoms bonds show select structure oh what structure protein sorry structure protein actions atoms and bonds so this is going to return me to the original representation but because i changed the color scheme it's no longer pink and teal but it's teal in general and coloring just the glutamic residues so select residue glue 
Mm -hmm. And actions, colors, all options. And this is gonna open a bigger palette. And, okay, we need to show all colors and change the coloring applies to atoms and bonds. So this, this is again another way to do things. Here, I'm showing all of the colors available, but also we have this list in the center. What is this coloring change gonna affect? It can affect everything, atoms, bonds, driven surfaces, labels, and whatnot, or just atoms and bonds. So atoms and bonds. And what color I'm gonna select? choose any color okay let's go for khaki no 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 do we have salmon there we go i'm gonna close i'm gonna leave the window open just in case and i'm gonna show you that yes indeed glutamic residues now or glutamates are now salmon You can change the coloric target back to all of the above. Here, all of the above. And click and click on tan. Uh, here we go. That would work very nice if we had ribbons, which now we're showing only for a couple of residues. Notice that the program it's doing it's best to show ribbons for only one residue or for two and if we were to change the color it will affect as we selected all of the above everything atoms and bonds ribbons surfaces labels etc and we can also change everything by actions color by heteroatom so even in this window we could do that there we go or actions color heteroatom without opening that other window. Both will perform exactly the same function. Coloring by heteroatom, as they say, it's very useful to select, to view some of the properties. We can, done the, we can do the picking too. And here they mention something important. You can control click to pick one atom or one bond. But if you want to click several, you need to click Control as well as shift. So I'm gonna try to do what they did. First, clear my selection. So that window back there shows lysine 15 and glutamic 11. Of which? Of chain A. So to find chain A, I'm gonna hover my mouse. This is B, so this is A. I'm gonna hover my mouse to get an idea of where the amino acids are. So this. Okay, so this is lysine 15 and this is 11. Okay, good. The control click selects that atom. I can select with shift this other one. Now I have two atoms from different amino acids and I can use the up arrow in my keyboard. Let's see, mm, there you go. Sorry for the hitting the microphone. You can use not the down, but the up. And what happens, I hope you could see it on the screen, is now the whole residue, sidechain and backbone, are selected. And this is exactly what they want to hear. You can, oh, I'm going to add the labels. You can select, and if you use the keyboard arrow up, you broaden the selection. But you can do it and I'm going to reverse that. I'm going to press the downward arrow and I'm going to select broaden and notice the icon for the upwards arrow. I'm going to label them. So actions label and what label should we go? I see that over there we have the residue in 
Huh, I don't know exactly what that is. Let's see. Action label residue name plus a specifier. Actions label residue name and specifier. Oh, it's tiny. Can you see it? I don't know why is this label is tiny. Don't remember making them tiny. Well, I can make them bigger. There we go. Now notice they have different colors because, well, I selected, I affected differently with the color window. When I selected affecting everything above the selection, which included the menus, and when I selected on the atoms and bonds. So that's why I have a salmon label over here. You can control click empty space and I'm gonna select something first. If you click control anywhere, you deselect, you clear the selection. That's sometimes very useful. Uh, well, we're not doing bad. Let's uh, carry on with this tutorial. Now, let's do more things. I'm gonna hide first the labels so action label off oh and that didn't work why hmm it's interesting wonder if i have to select these guys Interesting. Mm. Hey, this is something. Why can I not turn them on? because I change them doesn't make much sense does it uh, well this is not working for me maybe it's a bug so I'm gonna continue you try it try it first I hope it works if it doesn't I guess we could tell the chimera programmers Actions, Ribbon, Height. We already explored that. Actions, Ribbon, Height. There we go. Action, at, actions, Atoms, Bonds, Show, which we already have. Ah, now we have the water molecules and actions, Color by Element. That is going to change things a bit. Mm -hmm. Still, I don't get it why we cannot turn off this yeah I don't know so we have something like this window yeah the colors are slightly different now in general we can open more than one PDB file and those become a model with an ID assignated. And if you open the model panel, as I did before, you have that assigned, not assignated, assigned. Here is the first model with this ID of zero. Oh, sorry. With this assignment of zero and two check marks A for active and S for show. Let's see if this covered that. I guess active for activated option, which means that if I selected if I perform operations with the mouse that model is going to be rotated translated or zoom in zoom out and shown only if it's if it's really shown so for example if I click here I can hide it or show it sorry and that's pretty much about it we covered the first part of this tutorial and I don't want to go further for several reasons not to 
overload you with options and if you want to use this video as a reference to look for how to do things you can you don't have so many options to look for and you need to scroll through it so you can check it and continue as you feel like it so let's just close with this note to go on to part two below or exit camera with file quit i'm gonna i'm gonna do that so we can start over next time and we begin clean thank you for watching it's been a pleasure this is gonna be on the youtube channel later but well i encourage you to join in uh, because you could ask questions you could try doing this uh, at the same time i'm doing it for example you could have gotten some feedback about the residue of why maybe it's not working in modern versions of chimera and nobody has noticed i don't know we could have figured that out at any rate thank you for being here and see you soon